بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ایوری باڈی اینڈ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ آر لیکچر نمبر ففٹین اینڈ دس از اباؤٹ سلیکشن آف اے پروجیکٹ ہاؤ ڈو وی ایکچولی سلیکٹ اے پروجیکٹ بائی یوزنگ دس اینالیٹک ہرارکی فریم ورک دا ادر ڈے وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ اے ایچ پی ٹیکنیک اینڈ دا میتھڈ ہاؤ ٹو ایکچولی کنسٹرکٹ اے ایچ پی پرابلم اینڈ دین ایکچولی سالو اٹ Uh, uh, so before we uh, go um, to this new lecture, uh, this is uh, very much relevant uh, if we uh, start with the summary of the previous uh, lecture. Mm, so in previous lecture, uh, we had uh, uh, discussed about the definition of EHP and the use of EHP in decision making. And uh, uh, well, uh, when it comes to decision, Uh, so human are so comfortable with objective things uh, like figures or uh, numbers uh, so uh, to actually uh, eliminate the biases uh, you know, we we will use some methodology which is not subjective based uh, in real world when we actually um, have uh, some subjective decision uh, should i go for this uh, you know, Uh, shirt which is having a color of red or uh, the other shirt which is white or uh, the other one which is maroon uh, so what should I choose uh, so that is very much uh, dependent on uh, me being an individual and hence uh, w uh, I will choose a, a color which I actually like uh, for a very long time and you uh, people must appreciate this concept except ladies uh, ladies are actually uh, go for diversity and uh, things like that but for so many uh, gents you know, they are uh, having this thing a uh, curse uh, on them so they actually uh, collect uh, the shirts or uh, uppers or stuff like that uh, of the same very color uh, so Uh, yes, this is uh, ultimately the gents who are having this thing. Uh, they may have five or six uh, shirts or trousers of the same very color. Uh, as far as uh, women are concerned, they are they are uh, you know um, having this uh, very good sense of uh, um, um, diversity, and they want to uh, actually improve or uh, having different stuff uh, from uh, the previous stuff they had. Uh, but Uh, you know, this is uh, th all these decision making uh, are actually based on uh, person to person and uh, mm, their background uh, and their knowledge and their uh, limitation of thinking and stuff like that. So, when it comes to the decision making in projects, uh, uh, the prime objective or prime consideration is not you or not the uh, project manager or not the project team or not the uh, 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 other things uh, the prime consideration will be the objective or the mission of the project uh, for which everybody is actually working for so uh, to get those objectives uh, well done uh, you are in need of a methodology where your personal bias uh, is not hindering uh, the way of progress in project management so for that we are uh, going to use one tool or technique uh, that is kind of objective and your subjective uh, biases is actually uh, not considered over there so mm, for that uh, there is uh, this tool ahp and then we had discussed about the steps involved in ahp process and then uh, the step number one was first of all we identify the problem and we uh, define our problem in three very distinct Uh, parameters and those are the goal uh, what is our goal of uh, uh, actually applying this EHP the criteria uh, on which we have to choose our al uh, alternative and then alternative uh, listing okay so if we are having three four five six seven eight nine um, alternatives uh, so we have to choose from these alternatives only one thing and uh, mm, uh, what are the criterion uh, we have like if we are having uh, eight criterion or seven criteria uh, then how can actually we select uh, uh, one of the best uh, choice uh, by eliminating the subjective judgment uh, and uh, actually transforming that subjective judgment into objectivity um, this was the step number one by that time 
And then uh, uh, we had actually uh, developed the pairwise comparison metrics for every criteria. Remember the other day's example, we had three criteria, and those were the cost, delivery time, and uh, the reliability. And then we had prepared uh, pairwise comparison matrices for every uh, three of uh, those uh, criterion. Uh, and then mm, we will develop uh, uh, a normal matrix, uh, matrix for every uh, criteria. Or, and, uh, um, uh, and then we had developed uh, the priority vector. And this priority vector actually gives uh, which criteria is uh, actually uh, giving you uh, the maximum based on that criteria which alternative should be chosen. Uh, and then we actually learned, uh, learned how to calculate the consistency ratio. And we had this lambda thing and CI and CR. And um, then we had uh, developed a uh, uh, priority matrix, overall priority matrix, and uh, overall priority uh, vector we had uh, developed. And through that, we can actually decide which alternative is one of the best. So this was uh, what we have uh, done the other day. And now uh, we will take up this uh, case study. And uh, this is kind of a practice what we have uh, learned in uh, last one hour or so. Uh, but the thing is uh, uh, we want to apply that learning to a real time uh, project scenario. And uh, today's um, uh, lecture, this very lecture is all about this case study. And uh, um, now first, we have to define our problem. And uh, the problem is just like that. So you need to pay very good attention to, to this part of our course, and that is EHP. And uh, so that's why we are having two sessions uh, for this very particular uh, thing. So let's uh, have this uh, scenario. And uh, this is kind of scenario you may have uh, in your organization or uh, for your uh, organization and uh, mm, your team and your PMO, wherever you actually work for. And uh, um, uh, you have to select from different projects at time while you are working as a project manager. So you may be, uh, you may be given uh, with um, uh, two or three projects, and you have to choose one for uh, the organization to uh, go for. So um, let's say you are actually a very senior project manager, uh, and not in age, but uh, because of your work. Uh, so there is a, a difference between uh, aged person and experienced person. Uh, so if you, you, you have this uh, definition of experienced, I mean, uh, if you are aged, uh, then your definition should be rectified. Uh, so there is a difference between aged person and experienced person. So even uh, with the um, lesser age, you can uh, learn uh, from the experience of others. Uh, so while you are reading a book, you are actually learning from the experience of um, other human beings. Uh, so well, there are two ways uh, to learn. And uh, one way is to experience something and learn it uh, by that way. But the second thing is uh, even uh, more uh, uh, you know, um, appreciable, and that is you actually learn from the experiences of so many people. So when we talk about project management, project management is about good practices, and good practices come from uh, so many people, and uh, and the experience of so many people, and they actually get experience from. Uh, so many bad judgments uh, they had once. So you you are not uh, uh, having this uh, facility or liberty to have all those uh, bad things with you uh, to happen so that you can learn. Uh, so uh, so if you are uh, you are learning uh, very fast, so you may be elevated to some PMO at very early age. Okay. So if you are a team member or a project manager in PMO of a construction company. And you help senior management to choose a new business, OK? Owing to rise in awareness among uh, masses of uh, projects and people's demand for higher life standards has brought uh, an opportunity of more projects. Your organization has sought three projects. Project A is a road project, OK? 
the construction of road. I mean, uh, the length may be 25 or 20 or whatever the length may be, but that is a road project, road construction project. As your company is a construction um, a company, uh, and then project B is high-rise building, mm, uh, and project C is mass transit uh, bus service lane in urban city, uh, and one has been uh, constructed in Lahore city, okay, and uh, mm, high-rise buildings are all around us, okay. Uh, you have to choose only one project based on uh, three parameters, and the parameters uh, that your company have decided uh, are profitability, technical knowledge available with your company, and client's reputation. So uh, these are three parameters, and now you have to choose uh, uh, between three projects. The project C, uh, which is um, uh, ur uh, urbanized, uh, a mass transit bus lane, uh, and that is having a profit of 100 million. Uh, that is a huge profit. And project A has 80 million profit, and uh, that is road construction. And project B, that is high rise building, the profitability is lesser, 40 million profit. Uh, your company has full experience in road sector, few projects in building, and no project in mass transit bus lane. Though so you have hired a, a new project manager who has vast experience. Uh, in that very field. Uh, so client for project B is very reliable and uh, if you go for um, uh, building projects, you have uh, a very good client available with you. You have done two or three or four projects with that client and the payments they are making, they are, they are so good, they are uh, so good when uh, they are granting approvals and they are actually uh, making sure the access to the uh, project site. Uh, client C, mm, uh, client for project C, and that is um, mm, this uh, bus, uh, master's and bus lane. Uh, he or she is very uh, ambitious one. The client is very ambitious and uh, may have some loss of support uh, during the course of work. Um, uh, and client for project is challenging. You have worked uh, with this uh, guy and uh, uh, this guy is kind of challenging, uh, delaying the approvals uh, uh, unnecessarily at times, delaying the payments at words, uh, and, uh, mm, but you have to choose uh, keeping in view of the um, profitability and the client. And that then uh, there, uh, there is another parameter and guidelines from top management are that you have to go for maximum profitability and then the client's attitude should be considered whereas technical know-how can be acquired from market. Find out which project is acceptable and less risky. So there is a buzzword, risky. I mean, uh, what do you mean by risky? So AHP can be used from uh, project selection, appraisal, uh, procurement, um, risk management, uh, and uh, so many different uh, stuff where you have to actually make a decision uh, through uh, expert judgment or through subjective judgments. So this is case study and this is your uh, problem to solve for uh, this uh, day. Now we have adequate data with us. So if we, uh, step number one, remember uh, these are the, uh, these slides are kind of, uh, you know, mirror slides uh, the, uh, to those uh, what we were discussing the other day. So step number eight kya hai ji, aapko overall goal kya hai aapka. So the discussion we had, overall goal is we have to select a project uh, for uh, construction. Ek project humne choose karna hai. Criterion. Criteria humne kitne rakhe hai ji? Humne teen criteria rakhe hai. Aur wo criteria kya hai? Profitability hai. Technical knowledge or experience hai with the firm. And then th the third one is the client's reputation. And the same alternatives are First, construction of a road, construction of high-rise building, construction of mass transit bus lane. So these are our uh, options. Uh, so um, uh, if we develop a good uh, decision tree, uh, so we have this slide over there. And over there you can see overall goal is given over there. Best project alternative uh, we have to choose. And this is our overall goal. Uh, and uh, um, then um, criteria on which we have to choose our project, and that is profitability, technical knowledge, and client's reputation. And uh, we have these alternatives. 
project A, road project, project B, high rise building, and project C, mass transit bus service. And uh, we are having three alternatives to choose uh, between. So uh, remember, uh, the step number two is to construct pairwise comparison metrics. And uh, we can compare our um, alternatives uh, with these ranking or numerical ratings. And uh, if something is uh, equally preferred, then we use one. If something is uh, uh, moderately preferred to the second thing, then we use three. And what if we are having um, uh, equally preferred to moderately preferred, then we will use intermediate value, that is two. So in this fashion, we will use these uh, values. And this is, has been explained what I was actually mentioning over there, uh, intermediate numeric Mm, ratings uh, can be used. Uh, and another thing is very important, if we are um, having this x and that is preferable to y, then um, y's entry into x row, x, y, and x, y. So if we are having, we are comparing x with x, so we will have one. And if we are comparing y with one, y, we will have one. And what about y and x? And uh, x is preferable, uh, like uh, moderately preferable to y. So y's entry in x will be three. And we will use the reciprocal of this thing over there. And that is x entry into y, so one by three. So this has been given over there, a reciprocal rating uh, is assigned when the second alternative is preferred to the first. Okay, so the value of one is always assigned when comparing an alternative with itself. Uh, or if x and y and x and y and um, uh, x, uh, ye dono, uh, one one aapas mein ye kar rahe But agar ye equally preferred hai, uh, y is equally preferred to x, then that is one and um, that is one as well. So this will be the matrix. Okay, now uh, going through our um, problem, uh, we have this data. Uh, the project C has 200 million profit, and project A has 80 million profit, and project B has 40 million profit. So um, uh, through that data available, the R&D department of your uh, PMO has done some um, good working over there and they have come across with this data. So um, uh, what we want to do is we want to actually assign the ratings between uh, different projects. So the team has decided that in terms of profitability, project C is moderately preferred to project A. So moderately preferred, uh, we, uh, we can values how many Moderately preferred, we will use this value 3. So if we are having A, B, C, we will write like that A, sorry, A, B, and C. So we are comparing C with A, and C is more preferable. So uh, A's entry into C is 3. And hence, uh, C's entry into A will be 1 by 3. Okay. Uh, and uh, mm, and very strongly preferred uh, to project B. So for very strongly preferred, we are having value of seven. Uh, so B uh, B's entry in C is seven, and uh, um, uh, C's entry into B will be one by seven. Okay. Okay. And then um, uh, the project A is strongly to very strongly preferred. Uh, now we are having strongly, f uh, we, we have this rating 5, and very strongly we are having this rating 7. So it is a kind of intermediate value, so we will use 6. So B's entry into A will be 6, and A's entry into B will be 1 by 6. So in this fashion, we complete our uh, uh, pairwise comparison metrics. Let's have a view of that. 
So this is what we were doing over there. So 1, 6, 1 by 3, 1 by 6, 1, 1 by 7, 3, 7, 1. So all these, these values have been, uh, you know, mm, calculated. And uh, actually, uh, the matrix has been completed. Now the second step is to construct a uh, um, uh, normalized matrix. So divide each number in a column of pairwise matrix uh, by its column sum. So before we can do that, we should have uh, the sum of every thing over there. So over, uh, over there, we are having these values. And we are going to have a summation 1 plus 3 is 4. So we are having 4 plus 1 by 6 and then 6 and uh, 25 by 6. And if you actually divide that thing, uh, we will have 1 and then uh, like 6, 6. So you, you can round it out to 4.17. That is written over there. So is similarly, we have the summation of this column over there and this column over there. So uh, uh, now what we have to do is we have to divide every entry. So 1 will be divided by its column sum, and that is 4.17. And then 1 by 6 will be divided by 4.17. And 3 will be divided by 4.17. 6 will be divided by its column. Uh, some that is 14, so 6 divided by 14, 1 divided by 14, 7 divided by 14, and 1 by 3 divided by 1.48, uh, 1, by 1 by 7 will be divided by 1.48, and 1 will be divided by 1.48. So if we do carry out this division um, operation on every activity, uh, we get these uh, values. So project A, project B, project C, project A is having this value um, after division, and project C is having this uh, value for A. So this is called normalized matrix. Again, uh, for one very parameter, and that is uh, the profitability. OK, and so now let's move. And the next step is we, are, we want to have a vector, a normalized vector. And you remember, we take the average of all these values. So let's have 0.24 and then 0.43 and 0.23 and that is 10 and then 0.9 0 0.9 and average there are three parameters 1 2 3 there are three values so we will uh, by uh, averaging out we mean uh, we will have a 0 0.03 will be the uh, uh, value for project A as far as profitability is concerned. So what if we are having four alternatives, right? Uh, if we are having like uh, mm, fourth project and that project D and that is having uh, to construct a housing scheme and the profitability is something. So then we will have, uh, we would have uh, four uh, by four metrics and then we will, we would have divided our value by after submission by four. So this is a simple average thing. Uh, so everybody should be clear on that. Um, um, so um, if you are uh, the formula for averaging, uh, the one who are not good in maths. So if you are having x plus y, so the average of uh, x plus, uh, sorry, if you are having two digits, x and y, the average would have been x plus y divided by 2. There are two parameters. And if you are having three parameters, x, y, z and then x plus y plus z divided by 3 and you are having let's say four digits or four values a b c and d then you must have a plus b plus c plus d and divided by 4 so in this fashion you actually have the averages and uh, like five values 6 7 8 whatever the number then you have to divide uh, the summation of eight uh, values with eight seven values with seven and so on and so forth and uh, then uh, we come across with the priority vector by uh, having this average. So average each row of uh, normalized matrix. These row averages f uh, form the priority vector of the alternative preference uh, with respect to the particular criteria. And for this particular criteria, we are actually talking about uh, 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 profitability. Okay. 
So the priority vectors is determined by averaging the entire row in normalized matrix converting to decimal as we get. So uh, over there 0 0.9, 0 0.298 or 0.3 we were having uh, and then 0 0.069 and 0 0.632. If you actually, now there is a very interesting thing, you can check your answer. If you actually uh, do some maths uh, with that, uh, so mm, like uh, this is kind of 0.99, I, I believe. But anyways, uh, that is 8, 9, 17, and 19, and then 1, 10, and 9, um, and there is 3, and 6, 9. So you are having 0.999 over there. And uh, uh, over there, you, you are having the values in this vector sum to 1. Uh, so 0.99, you can say that that is equal to 1. Okay? So that is uh, 0.9999, uh, maybe. So uh, you are having this uh, value. So as far as profitability is concerned, our uh, project number 3, and that is C, is having highest priority or highest uh, candidacy for selection as far as three projects are concerned. So we should go and construct this m mass present bus lane uh, in that uh, area. Uh, so as far as profitability is concerned. But then uh, we have to check whether we do have uh, experience in that or uh, not or other thing which may be very important, the client's reputation, we are actually going for three parameters, not one. So this is one uh, criteria is done. But before we move towards uh, second criteria, uh, we will have this consistency check uh, for uh, this matrix. So calculate a consistency ratio, the consistency of the subjective input, because it is you who, who is assigning the numbers, right? You are saying that, OK, uh, assign 2, assign 3, assign 1, assign 4. So whether you are doing it right or not, um, so uh, we, are, we have to check it through some system, and that is consistency ratio. So um, uh, the consistency of subject input, subjective input in the pairwise comparison matrix can be measured by calculating um, a consistency ratio. A consistency ratio of less than 0.1 is good. Uh, for ratios which are greater than 0.1, the subjective input should be re-evaluated, and then you have to re-submit uh, some figures. So for every criterion, uh, like uh, um, uh, profitability, like client's reputation, like uh, technical knowledge with the firm, you have to follow all these steps, OK? So these are, uh, remember the other day we were doing what? We were actually having. Uh, lambda maximum we were calculating and through lambda max we were calculating ci through this formula over there ci is equal to lambda max uh, minus n divided by n minus 1 and n is the number of uh, alternatives and then we were having this ri uh, value and uh, if and uh, this ri is uh, given f uh, through that table so you can have, if you are having five alternatives, then you will use 1.12 um, uh, as I ri, uh, and then this ri value will be used in that formula. So consistency ratio uh, is equal to ci, and ci is dependent on number of alternatives and lambda maximum. And how we calculate lambda maximum, we are going to calculate that uh, in an uh, uh, in upcoming slide. And then ri is based on um, number of alternatives. So for our, this problem we are discussing uh, in this case study, uh, we are having three number of alternatives and then hence we will use 0.58 uh, RI random index. Okay, let's have uh, an example. So lambda maximum we had uh, uh, calculated is 3.10 and how did we do that? For each row of pairwise comparison metrics, determine the weighted sum by summing the multiples of the entries by priority of its corresponding column alternative. So uh, remember, we had done this step, like uh, this was 0.298 times plus, plus, and um, 0.069. And 
3, 2. And in these columns, these values. Uh, uh, normalized matrix, uh, we will use so pairwise comparison matrix. Okay, so pairwise comparison matrix is given over there. So we will use these values over there: one, one by six, and three. And one by six and three. So similarly, we will do uh, those columns filled, and then we will have some value over uh, there in in that shape. Okay. So we have, will have three values, and then we will, uh, you know, mm, uh, um, divide its uh, weighted sum by the probability of its corresponding row alternative. Then determine the average delta maximum of the result of uh, step number two. Then we will have the average, and then this value will be delta maximum. So for for that we are having this 3.10. Uh, the whole process was done in previous lecture. Um, you can actually consult that. Then we are having this delta maximum available with us. And then CI is delta maximum minus uh, number of alternatives. Those are three. Uh, and then N minus one. Uh, so we are having this uh, CI. And CR is 0 0.09. Uh, if we put CI and RI in this um, uh, values and RI is you know uh, 0.58 uh, for three alternatives and uh, this is very much given over there um, over there this is it okay so uh, our consistency our ratio is 0 0.09 that is uh, less than 0.1 hence this is quite okay right and Mm, and then there is a second parameter, and, uh, mm, and that is technical uh, knowledge. Um, so your company has uh, full experience in uh, road sector, a uh, few projects uh, in building, and no project in mass transit bus lane. Though you have hired a new project who has vast experience in that. So team has decided that in terms of technical knowledge, project A is strongly preferred uh, to project B. And extremely preferred to project C. So if we are having A, B, and C, and A, B, and C, when it comes to A, it's strongly preferred to B. So when it comes to strongly preferred, we are having this strongly preferred phi value. Okay, so uh, we will put five over there for. Uh, so B's entry into A is 5, and A's entry into B will be 1 by 5. And A's uh, entry into A will be 1, B's entry into B will be 1, and C into C will be 1, okay? And then um, A is extremely preferred. Uh, so when it comes to extremely, so C's entry into A will be 9, and A's entry into C will be 1 by 9, okay? And then B is very strongly preferred. Very strongly means 7. Uh, so C's entry into B will be 7 and over there 1 by 7. So in this fashion, we will complete our uh, uh, metrics uh, for technical uh, knowledge comparison, uh, pairwise comparison metrics. Uh, so we are having these uh, values. And those are quite OK. Uh, this is what we have actually done. Um, so we are having these values. And we have completed our uh, pairwise comparison matrix. Uh, the next step is we have to uh, go through a normalized uh, mm, comparison matrix. And uh, for that, we will actually do some math. And we will uh, sum these three, and then these three, and then these three. OK. So divide uh, for normalized matrix, as you know, we have to divide every entry into pairwise comparison matrix. Um, by its uh, column sum. So for uh, before we actually divide every entry, we will have um, the column sum. So by for these three values from um, pairwise comparison matrix, uh, we will add them up: one plus one by five plus one by nine. You can use calculators, obviously. Uh, so, but for those uh, who are quite good with uh, or you comfortable with uh, doing them you know, these calculations on screen uh, so i'm just doing it for you okay so 45 
plus 5 plus 9 and that is 54 by 45 and if you do some math over there you get to 1.31 and similarly the summation of column uh, this and column this will be uh, like that so you are having these values now what you have to do is you have to divide one this one by this 1.31 and then 1 by 5 by this 1.31 and 1 by 9 1.31 and similarly 5 by 6 uh, 0.14, 1 by 6.14 and 1 by 7, um, 6.14. So this 9 by 17, 7 by 17 and 1 by 17. So in this fashion, mm, you are actually uh, dividing all this stuff and then you get uh, this um, normalized matrix for uh, technical knowledge over there. You are having these 0 0.76, 0 0.15, 0 0.0. So these values are coming from after you actually dividing this one uh, to by 1.31 and 1 by 5 uh, by this column sum and 1 by 9 by this column sum. So after uh, you have this normalized matrix, remember we do uh, uh, the same step and we are having uh, the average of these uh, parameters over there. Uh, and if we actually add these values, so we are having 0.76, 0.81 and 0.53. So um, let's say 9 and 8 um, and 16, 23. Uh, so 2.39 uh, is the value. Then you are having three parameters. You you take average and uh, you divide 23, uh, 2.39 by 3, and you may have a value of um, 0.79. Uh, 6 or something, 0 0.797 or something like that. So, so mm, we are having uh, this um, value of 702 for uh, project A and uh, for project B we are having 0.242 and for project C we are having 0.056. Uh, and uh, uh, as far as technical knowledge is concerned, the second parameter we are having, remember we have to select our projects through three parameters uh, and criterion and that those are the profitability, technical knowledge and uh, the last one is client's reputation. Uh, so as far as technical knowledge is concerned, the project A is extremely preferable uh, uh, as compared to other two options. Okay, So project B is the second option and project C is uh, least or uh, third op option. So remember we are having um, uh, uh, this uh, project um, uh, C was preference uh, when it, it was about profitability. Okay, so when it was pr about profitability, we were actually using this project C uh, as uh, most preferable, and the project A was the second pro preference, and project B was uh, the third uh, preference. Uh, now uh, this is uh, about technical knowledge. And then checking consistency ratio, and uh, uh, we do know that uh, um, uh, we can actually uh, do this thing, consistency. And we uh, will follow all these parameters or steps given in con how to check the consistency ratio for this very criteria. And uh, uh, we uh, have uh, 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 lambda maximum. Uh, and then we were having this CI thing uh, from lambda maximum and then uh, we are having um, RI and then we were having uh, consistency ratio formula so we can actually calculate the consistency, consistency ratio for this very problem. Okay, so you may have a consist consistency ratio value up to 0.1. Okay, anything which is less than 0.1 is okay. Okay, but if you are having 0 0.1, 2, 0 0.3, so, so you have to readjust a little bit, not uh, exactly. So for this very particular criteria, if you check, you may come across with the CR value of okay 0 0.12. Then what you have to do is, uh, you can actually change this 5 to 6, or you can change this 9 to 8, 
uh, or stuff like that, or this seven to six, and then uh, uh, you may have uh, you know g give this iteration, and by the time uh, you may get a very good value of CR. Uh, so mm, you have to check it by your own self. Uh, so we uh, uh, move further as far as mm, the third criteria is uh, concerned. Okay. So uh, client for project uh, B is very reliable. You have worked with this uh, client and uh, you have done like four projects with that and this, cli uh, this client is good as far as approval giving uh, mechanism is concerned. He or she gives you uh, the approval very on time. Uh, he, attended, uh, he attends you uh, with uh, uh, great uh, detail and with uh, uh, politeness and then uh, with all the professional uh, means and ways. Uh, whereas project C, mm, the client is so ambitious that is uh, uh, head of uh, uh, government, district level government, and uh, uh, and you have experience and uh, but through experience I mean uh, you may not be the guy who has experience but you have observed that the other contractors or cons uh, companies have experienced some loss of support during the course of the project. And the client for project A is challenging. Now, there is a difference between ambition and the challenge, you know. So A is very, very challenging, but you know what, you, this is having good profit and um, you are ha you've done so many projects, but still, uh, for this very particular choice, project A client is very challenging. So team has decided that in terms of client's reputation, project B is strongly prefer preferred to project C. So we are having A, B, and C, and then A, B, and C. So um, B is strongly preferred uh, to C. Uh, so um, uh, when it comes to uh, B, A's entry into B, into C, uh, strongly preferred uh, like seven, uh, sorry, five, and uh, very strongly preferred uh, to A, so A's entry into B is 7, and uh, C and B over 1 by 5, and this 1 by 7, and then project C is moderately preferred to project A. Uh, so mm, you are having um, 3 over there, 1 by 3 over there, and 1, 1, 1. So you check with these values, okay, we are having these values, okay. In this fashion, uh, we have values with us uh, as far as pairwise uh, comparison matrix uh, is concerned for uh, this third criterion, and that is the client's reputation. So you can treat client as uh, client's reputation. Okay, so project A is having uh, uh, is uh, lesser. Um, uh, preference as far as project B is concerned and uh, uh, and even lesser uh, uh, again for uh, C and uh, project B is more preferable and uh, uh, even is preferable to project C okay so the next step is we actually do some maths and uh, before we go and have a normalized matrix through uh, from uh, pairwise comparison matrix we divide uh, all these values and 371 we are having like 11 and then uh, we have uh, 1 by 5 plus 1 by 1 and 1 by 7 and 35 7 plus 35 plus 5 47 by 35 so uh, this will be uh, 47 by 35 and similarly 1 by 3 plus 6 and uh, 3 1 plus uh, 18, 19 by 3 for that column. So if we do some maths, uh, we are having the figures with us, 1.34, 6 uh, okay. And uh, what we do over, uh, when we want to have normalized matrix, we divide every entry of a column uh, with a column sum. So for that, we will divide this one uh, by 11, and this 7 by 11, and 3 by 11, and 1 by 7 by 1.34, 1 by 
three four and then one by five by one point three four one by three divided by six point three three and five divided by six point three three and one divided by six point three three. So when we divide, we get these values: point zero nine, point double one, point zero five, and now we are having this normalized matrix for Klein's reputation. And the next step is uh, we get priority vector, and what we do, we have uh, the average of these values over there, uh, sum divided by three, like there are three parameters, and similarly, the average of these values and average of these values. So this math has been done over there. So these are the values. So the priority vector is determined by averaging the row entries in normalized matrix. Converting to decimal, we get like project A, project B, and project C. And through that, remember for profitability uh, context, uh, we were having project C preferable, project A was the second option, and project B was the third option. Whereas, as far as technical knowledge was concerned, project A was the first preference, and project B was the second preference, and project C was the third preference. And for this very client's reputation criteria, project B is the first option, project C is the second, and project A is the first option. Now, what will uh, you uh, choose? I mean, uh, there are different criteria, and uh, they are actually leading or pointing towards different uh, selection things. Uh, no, you have to choose between these uh, things. And uh, before we actually work with that, uh, remember we had this thing, the summation of all the three values will be equal to one, okay? And uh, uh, before we uh, move further, uh, remember we have to take up mm, this uh, criteria for the consistency check, and then we will uh, calculate lambda maximum for that, and then CI, RI, that is 0.58 as we are using three parameters, and then uh, CR, consistency ratio. And if you find uh, consistency ratio less than 0.1, then okay, okay? Uh, and if you are having something greater than 0.1, then so you have to uh, uh, actually change these values. You know, one, one by seven, seven, uh, one. Like you have, you can actually assign a six. You may have uh, assigned on higher side or over there uh, on lower side, and uh, these values may be actually revisited. Uh, and now, uh, after doing that consistency check, uh, we move forward uh, because we are having. Uh, this A thing is very preferable as far as um, knowledge is concerned. We are having so much uh, knowledge and we have all the processes with us. Uh, but um, as far as profitability is concerned, that is the second option. And as far as client's reputation is concerned, that is the third option. For project B, um, as far as client's reputation is concerned, we are having the first uh, 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 preference. And then as far as um, the profit is concerned, that is the third option. And as far as the technical knowledge is concerned, that is the second option. Now for project C, as far as profit is concerned, the first option. As far as client's reputation is concerned, that is the second option. And as far as technical knowledge and experience with the firm is concerned, that is third option. Now we have to choose one project based on these uh, parameters. Uh, then we have to compare the criterion with each other. Uh, so, uh, from top, top management, we have these guidelines uh, that uh, we have to go for a maximum profitability and then the client's attitude should be considered, whereas technical know-how can be acquired from the market. Okay? So, team has decided that in terms of criteria, uh, profitability is strongly preferred. Uh, so, like uh, if we are having this thing, profitability. And then we are having uh, client, and this thing, um, technical knowledge. Similarly, profitability, client, and technical knowledge. So, uh, profitability is strongly preferred uh, to client. So, client's entry into profitability is five, everyone by five, uh, and extremely preferred um, to technical knowledge. So that is nine and one by nine, let's say. Uh, okay, one, one, one. And client's attitude is uh, client's attitude is uh, 
uh, moderately prefer to technical knowledge. So technical knowledge entry is 3 and 1 over 3. So this is kind of matrix we have over there. Uh, so this is uh, 8 and over there you can see three criterion uh, in horizontal and vertical um, uh, shape. So the matrix is complete. And now we have to actually done what? We have to do submission for these uh, three values. So 1 by 5 plus 1 by 9 plus 1 and you know 45 and 5 plus 9 plus uh, 45 and 54.45 uh, so that is uh, we are having the submission and then uh, 9 3 um, 13 and then 5 plus 6 plus uh, 1 by 3 and you are having 3 so 19 point uh, three. So if you do some maths or you are using calculator, then you will come up with these figures 1.31, 6.33, and 13 uh, for uh, the no, as far as normalized matrix uh, is uh, concerned you know, for criterion. And then uh, you have to divide every entry with the summation of the column or with the sum of the column and then this one will be divided by this and this three will be divided by this and this one will be divided by this and this nine will be divided by this five will be divided by this one by three divided by this one by nine divided by this and one by five will be divided by this so then we are having these parameters available with us and after having normalized matrix uh, with us uh, what we will do we will have the average of uh, these uh, one column or one row okay so for profitability we are having uh, this value of 0 0.748 uh, technical experience 0 0.071 and client reputation is 0.18 so profitability is having higher in influence whereas mm, technical experience is the least one and the client's reputation is uh, having uh, second option so we have done um, all the uh, basic steps step number one through five for uh, every criterion and even the criterion uh, uh, themselves so after we have completed the steps uh, now we will uh, have this uh, decision alternatives uh, listed horizontally and the criteria uh, vertically uh, so over there we have this uh, 0.748 remember where uh, we are getting this from there okay and then you know, 0.071 is for technical knowledge and 0.18 for clients reputation so uh, for profitability we are copying these things from uh, concerned vectors okay uh, and then technical knowledge vector and then clients uh, knowledge vector and then we are doing some maths and uh, if we do 0.78 uh, multiplied by this plus 0 0.071 multiplied by this 0.18 multiplied by this uh, and we add these values and then 0.748 multiplied by this value 0 0.071 multiplied by this value and 0.18 multiplied by this value and then 0.748 multiplied by this value plus point uh, this val uh, this 0 0.071 multiplied by this value and uh, plus 0.18 multiplied by by this value uh, so we are having these submissions and uh, uh, then uh, we are having these scores so uh, there are st step number seven and eight uh, we have done that and then uh, overall priority vector has been established and this is overall priority vector so project A is having score 0.288 project B is having score 0.199 but the project C is having score 0.512 so as we can see from this table uh, that the highest score 0.512 is for uh, project C uh, that is mass, uh, uh, mass transit bus uh, service lane uh, construction of that so this project is uh, appearing to be a uh, very good overall recommendation so uh, we are ha having done with this uh, case study uh, like uh, how you select a project through this very good tool of EHP uh, and uh, you can use this EHP technique like uh, if you want to select a uh, vendor or you want to select a contractor or you want to select a supplier and then you can establish 
different technical parameters to select like uh, the experience of the supplier, uh, the capacity of uh, the, uh, the working capacity of the supplier, the financial health of the supplier, uh, the transportation facilities available with the supplier, the past experience uh, with your company of the supplier, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 parameters even you, could, you can go. Uh, and then you are having this very good understanding of your project. Okay, uh, if uh, my supplies are delayed, how much um, effect it may have on my project as far as uh, objectives of the project are concerned, like the time is concerned, like the cost is concerned, the quality and other parameters or other constraints are concerned. So uh, for this, that case, uh, that uh, supplier case study, uh, you can have seven or eight uh, different uh, uh, criterion and then you are having like four uh, suppliers and uh, basing on, on uh, eight parameters you can have uh, your uh, uh, supplier selected. Now this is one example of selecting a supplier and another uh, parameter may be like if you want to rank between the risks. Okay, So you are having risk number one, two, three, four, five uh, and the, mm, the parameters on which you want to actually uh, select your risk or you want to rank the risk uh, is uh, uh, the probability of the risk, the impact of the risk, and the duration of the risk. So there may be three different parameters on which you can actually uh, have. Um, and if you want to select a contractor, so you, uh, you may be having uh, different parameters for that contractor. Understanding of the project, uh, working methodology, financial health, uh, past experience, or uh, project uh, manager available with the construction team. Uh, so if you are working uh, with uh, this um, uh, social sector project and you want to um, select a project manager, right? So you can have these criteria of like education, uh, like uh, working experience, uh, and like uh, team building uh, assessment and uh, then uh, the um, projects, uh, the, the worth of the projects this project manager has done. And you can even select the project manager. So this tool can be used on so many scenarios uh, ranging from selecting a contractor uh, to a consultant to supply to rank, rank the risks to done the procurements and stuff like that. So uh, this is uh, such a beautiful and uh, excellent tool available for the project managers to make decisions. Uh, so this is it. Uh, we are done with the AHP. Uh, and let's have the summary of, uh, for this very particular lecture. We had uh, done this um, uh, case study uh, for selecting a project for a company. Uh, so um, uh, we, we, we were following all the uh, steps uh, discussed earlier uh, in the previous uh, lecture. Uh, so this was kind of uh, uh, mm, uh, application of that uh, theory on that. And um, this is it. Mm, uh, we end our lecture with this uh, end note and that is uh, management is doing the things right uh, and leadership is doing the right things. Okay. So uh, a project manager should be a leader uh, besides he is a project or she is a project manager. So I say thank you, uh, Allah Hafiz and good luck.